Hi, Miss Roxanne here, your paraeducator for Echo Glen. And today we're going to talk about Abraham Lincoln. But before we get started, I have a, an agenda typed up of what the expectations are of this lesson and how we're going to proceed with that. So I'm going to get that schedule up on the board for you to look at first. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is two pieces of paper, one for your assignment and one for you to take notes on. Okay, and on the one for your assignment, please put your name and the date and your cottage name on the top of the paper. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a brain pop uh, video about Abraham Lincoln. And then I have two really short YouTube videos. I will stop in the middle of the second YouTube video so you can do a little practice writing assignment on your sheet of paper that has your name and date. And then we'll review what a claim is, what a counterclaim is, and what a rebuttal is. And uh, then once I finish that, we're gonna read an article uh, and it's called Sickness and Health. And that's where you're going to do your assignment from. So please take notes. Just know in the back of your mind that you are going to write a claim, a counterclaim and a rebuttal from the said rate, uh, reading um, and a claim statement, your claim statement should state your position and reasons why your position is right. A counter argument starter, such as the opposing view is that, or it is true that, or admittedly, or some people think, or um, however, or but, or whatever you're gonna use for that counter argument starter. And then your rebuttal explains your evidence, why your claim is more valuable than other counterclaims. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get the video started and uh, we'll go from there. All right, Abraham Lincoln. Um, good morning, Mr. President. Wait a minute, where am I? Obi. Dear Tim and Moby, who was Abraham Lincoln and what did he do? From Neil. You couldn't wait till after breakfast to teleport us here? Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the United States. He served from 1861 to 1865. He brought about the end of slavery and guided the US through the Civil War. These accomplishments have earned Lincoln a place among America's greatest presidents. It's true, he really was born in a log cabin in Kentucky in 1809. His parents were poor farmers and young Abe grew up in serious poverty. After Abe's mother died of an illness, his father married one of their neighbors. She was a big influence on young Abe and encouraged him to go to school. Yep, Lincoln did grow to be quite tall, six feet, four inches to be exact, and strong too. In 1837, he moved to Springfield, Illinois, and began a career as a lawyer. He soon married a woman named Mary Todd, and with her had four sons. Hang on, I'm getting to the good stuff. Lincoln's political career started in the Illinois State Legislature, where he served four terms from 1838 to 1841. Then, in 1846, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, where he served one term. As a congressman, he supported laws that would have banned slavery in any new territories acquired by the United States. Lincoln thought that the Constitution protected slavery in states where it already existed. But he also believed the Founding Fathers did not want it to spread to new territories. He personally hoped that slavery would die out naturally as more and more free states were added to the country. But in 1854, Congress passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act which let new territories decide for themselves whether or not to allow slavery. In response, Lincoln gave a speech that outlined his moral, political, and economic arguments against slavery. Around the same time, he helped form the new Republican Party, which had an anti-slavery platform. In 1858, he ran for the U.S. Senate against Illinois Democrat Stephen A. Douglas, a major supporter of the Kansas-Nebraska Act. 
The seven Lincoln-Douglas debates were the highlight of the campaign. Lincoln went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the more well-known Douglas, challenging him on the topic of slavery. Lincoln lost the election, but his brilliant performance in the debates turned him into a major political star. The Republican Party picked him as its candidate for the 1860 presidential election, and this time he defeated Douglas to win the presidency. But there was no time to celebrate. Before he took office, seven southern states seceded or left the Union because they opposed Lincoln's stance on slavery. Four more followed before the year was out. These 11 states declared themselves the Confederate States of America. Lincoln believed that secession was illegal and he was willing to use force to preserve the Union. When Confederate troops fired on Union troops at Fort Sumter, South Carolina in 1861, the Civil War began. Oh yeah, throughout the war, Lincoln took an active role in military strategy, including the picking of top generals. And in 1862, he issued his Emancipation Proclamation. It freed all the slaves in Confederate-controlled territory as of January 1st, 1863, and it also opened the door for African-American soldiers to fight in the Union Army. Lincoln then worked on the passage of the 13th Amendment, which would permanently abolish slavery throughout the United States. Uh, this is Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The Battle of Gettysburg in 1863 was a major Union victory and one of the bloodiest battles of the entire war. Months after the battle, during a ceremony for the fallen soldiers, Lincoln delivered one of the most famous speeches in U.S. history. The Gettysburg Address lasted just over two minutes, but it transformed American political thought. Using simple but poetic language, Lincoln reminded his audience that the Declaration of Independence was America's founding document. The message was clear. Even if the Constitution allowed states to make their own laws about slavery, the Declaration's promise of equality for everyone was more important. In 1864, with Union victory in sight, Lincoln was re-elected in a landslide. He proposed a generous policy toward the South that would quickly put the bitterness of the war behind them, but some refused to let old grudges die. An actor named John Wilkes Booth was furious with Lincoln for promising to grant rights to former slaves. On April 14, 1865, while the President and First Lady were attending a play at Ford's Theater, Booth snuck into the President's box and shot him. Lincoln died from the wound the next day. He was the first U.S. president to be assassinated. But Booth couldn't destroy Lincoln's legacy. Over the course of his amazing life, Lincoln reunited a fractured nation and almost single-handedly ended slavery in the process. What the? Oh, this is just perfect. All right. Okay, so now we're going to do the YouTube videos. And the first one is going to, is called Writing a Claim Statement. And we're going to figure out what a claim statement is and how to write it. It is a very short video. Okay, so what is a, what is a claim statement and how do you write one? A claim statement in introduces a specific claim you're making about a topic, whether you agree or disagree with the topic. Um, it describes what, what, it, what a claim statement does is it describes three ways in which you uh, will support and develop your claim. So the, your position for or against and three reasons is a claim statement and that's it. That's pretty easy. Well, let's look at a counter claim and a um, rebuttal, and that's another one that we're gonna be doing. So what is a counterclaim? So a claim is a position, either you're, you're for or against, and you have uh, three, at least three ideas of how you're gonna support that. Now, how, what's a counterclaim? Let's see. A counterclaim, makes your argument stronger. And I'm gonna show you why. A counterclaim is a, otherwise known as a counter argument, 
is the opposing argument. In other words, it's what you imagine the other side would say about your argument. So let's just say you want to tell your sister or whoever she is, I want ice cream. And you're thinking, oh, she's going to say, it's too fattening. So you have to come up with your counterclaim to, to try to convince them. So it's a, it'll be your topic sentence of your counter argument. Uh, your job in your counterclaim is always to acknowledge what their claim is. That, oh, it's too fattening. So this, in this one, he says, I know that ice cream has a lot of calories. Because see, she's complaining that I don't want to eat ice cream. It's, too, it's got too many calories. And he's like, well, I know it does. So that's his counterclaim. And then he has a rebuttal. And his rebuttal goes on to say, but we can burn those calories off by walking to the ice cream shop. So see, he made a claim, I want ice cream. She had a counterclaim, ah, oh, it's too many dang calories. So now he's gonna use a counter argument and he's gonna say, I know that ice cream has a lot of calories and then he's gonna review it, but we can burn. So he's got some evidence there. He's got a little proof, but we can burn it off by walking to the store. And then she's like, huh, I was going to say that ice cream is too fattening, but you're right. It's not a concern if we burn the calories off. So a counter argument starter is how you're gonna present your counterclaim, correct? So sometimes you might use words like the, the opposing view is that, or some people think that, or, or, one might object here, or it might seem like, and what he says is, but, but what are some things that you could use as a counter argument starter? So your assignment in this little writing thing is to write a few counter argument starters, such as the examples of, that are on the screen right now. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes, or at least one, to write down a few for me on your piece of paper with your name on it, please. We got about 30 more seconds. All right, I'm going to go ahead and push play and we'll look at some more of this video. So the rebuttal, don't fall asleep on your argument. You gotta have that rebuttal. It's basically your way of saying, no, you are wrong and here's why. The rebuttal is another supporting reason why your point of view is correct. You must use ev evidence to support your rebuttal. Use a quote, paraphrase, or summary with citation. Ways to compose a rebuttal. Once you've determined the likely counterclaim, refute it, in other words, Explain using evidence that your reasons are more valuable. Argue that your opponent is mistaken. Argue that your opponent has, has not thought their position's consequence. Put them all together. You have a counterclaim, reasons and support for a counterclaim, and you have your rebuttal. And this is an example of what that looks like. So I, I, I'm going to assume that somebody is saying that technology and using our cell phones are you know, making us dumb. So he has a counterclaim, or they, and their counterclaim is there are those who claim. There's your argument starter. There are those who claim that technology is making people less creative. Now his reasoning, 
and support for this counterclaim. They say that computers and cell phones make us lazy and we don't have to think or create for ourselves. So here's his rebuttal, and he has a citation, I might add. However, according to Compute Magazine, computers and cell phones offer multi multiple creative outlets. Using technology, one can design a web page, create art, write a short story, or even a novel. Or when you are looking for a job, you can get a job through a recruiting agency that's online. So it's not all bad. And I like his citation a lot. Okay, so remember, treat this like a regular body paragraph. You need examples and explanations. Your argument is only as strong as your evidence. You don't always have to disprove the counterclaim, just weaken it. Every example and explanation must prove the counterclaim is flawed or wrong. Use transition words like however, or in contrast, or although, or conversely. All right, so let's go over what a claim statement is a statement and reasons why your statement is right. Remember, it was a statement and three reasons to why you are right. And your counterclaim is the opposing argument, what you imagine the other side would say. And then your rebuttal is ex you have to explain using evidence why your reasons are more valuable than the reasons in the counterclaim. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and read that article. And we're going to read Sickness and Health. And remember, if you take notes, it'll be a lot easier to form your claim, your counterclaim and your rebuttal. So we're gonna do sickness and health, and here we go. These days, it's not all that, uh, that, all that uncommon for a man to attain a height of six foot four, or 193 centimeters. But in Lincoln's time, it was incredibly rare. In fact, in 1962, a doctor suggested that the former president may have suffered from something called Marfran syndrome. This genetic disorder affects the body's connective tissue, the stuff that holds organs in place and muscles and bones together. People with Marfran syndrome are often tall with unusually long limbs and fingers. The, that theory doesn't seem likely, however, since Lincoln had never had neither cardiovascular problems nor vision problems both of which are common among Marfran syndrome patients. In 2007, a doctor came up with an updated theory to explain Lincoln's height. He might have suffered from multi multi multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2B or MEN2B. This disease is caused by tumors that affect the endocrine system, which controls the body's hormones. Side effects can include long limbs, bumpy lips, and lar a large jaw, a and drooping eyelids, all of which Lincoln had. A DNA test would be the only way to confirm Lincoln had MEN2B. A sample could be obtained from the blood-stained pillowcase on, disp on display at a Civil War Museum in Philadelphia but whether it should be done is a controversial issue. Regardless of whether or not Lincoln suffered from one of these diseases, he was far from frail. On the contrary, his strength and endurance were almost legendary. In the 1960 presidential race, Lincoln campaigned as rail splitter of the West, a reference to his early days on his family's farm where he split logs to make rail fences. What do you think about that? That's pretty cool. All right, so here's your assignment. Let's, I'm gonna bring that up one more time for you to look at and you may freeze the screen if you need to keep it up on the screen. That's totally okay. So your, your assignment is to write a claim and a counterclaim and a rebuttal from the sickness and health article that I just read you.
Number one, a claim statement stating your position and reasons why your position is right. Number two, a counter argument starter. The opposing view is, or it is true that, or admittingly, or some people think. And then number three is a rebuttal, explaining evidence why your claim is more valuable than the counterclaim. And that is the end of your lesson for today. Remember your writing conventions to capitalize the beginning of every sentence, any names are capitalized and make sure your ending uh, punctuation is there. And good luck on your grading.